I'm Abigail Matheny, and I'm here with your weekly announcements. You're invited to join us today for a special Hope and Remembrance service in the sanctuary at 3 p.m. as we gather to give thanks for those we've loved and lost. This service provides individuals and families an opportunity at Christmas to remember loved ones and to light a candle in that person's name. We also have fun planned for your teens today. Our youth group is hosting a tacky sweater Christmas party from 4.30 to 6. Teens should meet in the casual worship center in the tackiest Christmas sweater they can find. They'll enjoy holiday refreshments and games with friends. We hope to see you at one of our Christmas Eve services this Friday. You can find all the details and a listing of all of our services at our website, broadmoormethodist.org. This year's special Christmas Eve offering will go to support all of Broadmoor's mission ministries, such as Red Stick Together, Southeast Ministries, and Disaster Relief. If you have any questions about these events or wish to sign up for weekly emails, feel free to stop by our Connection Cafe or visit our website at broadmoormethodist.org. We hope you have a great week and Merry Christmas. Welcome to the online worship experience at Broadmoor United Methodist Church in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. My name is Donnie Wilkinson. I'm one of the pastors here, and we're so grateful that you are with us today. We invite you now to allow our prelude to prepare your hearts and minds to worship God. This is how we know what love is. Jesus Christ left the splendor of heaven to come to us in the form of a baby, to walk among us in humility and to give his life for our sins on a cross. Today we light the candle of love. May the sacrificial love of Christ be our example in this season and throughout the year. We pray this in the name of the one who is the very embodiment of love. Amen. Love has come, a light in the darkness. Love shines forth in the Bethlehem skies. See, all heaven has come to proclaim it. Hear how their song of joy arises. Love, love, born unto you, a Savior. Love, love. Glory to God on high. Love is born, come share in the wonder. Love is God now asleep in the hay. See the glow in the eyes of his mother. What is the name her heart is saying? Love, love. 
is the name she whispers love, love, Jesus Emmanuel. Love has come and never will leave us. Love is life everlasting and free. Love is Jesus within and among us. Love is the peace our hearts are seeking. Love, love, love is the gift of Christmas. Love, love, praise to you, God. Let us pray together. Our gracious and loving God, we come to you this day, our hearts filled with gratitude for all the blessings of this season. We remember what this time of year is all about, your incredible love and mercy and grace that you have shown us in your son, Jesus. And so we ask, O oh God, that as Christmas Day draws near, you will help us to be ever mindful or the reason for this season. Father, we pray for all of those whom we know and love who are suffering in this time of year, those who are facing their first Christmas alone, those who are celebrating the holidays for the first time without that member of their family or that friend who has died. We lift them up to you and ask that you will give them special mercy and grace. We ask for your healing for all of those who are sick and suffering. We ask you to pour out your blessing upon all those that we know and love. And above all, O oh God, we ask that you will help us to live these days with truly grateful hearts and to let us be bearers of the good news of your Son, our Prince of Peace. It's in his name that we pray, as he taught us, say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen.
Let us pray together. Come, Holy Spirit. Open our eyes so that we may see. Open our ears so that we may hear. Open our minds so that we may understand. And open our hearts so that we may receive whatever it is that you have for us today. For we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. So by this time next week, Christmas Day will have come and gone. I wonder what you will remember. You, you may remember a particularly thoughtful present that someone gave you or a moment of laughter and joy you spent with your family or friends. Or, unfortunately, you may remember that very uncomfortable silence after Uncle What's-His-Name started talking politics at the Christmas dinner. What I really hope you will remember is the faithfulness of God. God's faithfulness is a central theme in our scripture passage today, which is found in Luke chapter 1, beginning with verse 39. Now on Christmas Eve and Christmas Day, all of our attention will be focused on the very pregnant Mary and the very anxious Joseph trying to find a place to stay the night in Bethlehem. But today, the story we're looking at takes place in an unnamed town in the hill country of Judea. And Mary has only recently been told that she will be having a baby. Look at what the scripture says. In those days, Mary set out and went with haste to a Judean town in the hill country where she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. If you go back to the beginning of chapter 1 and read through the first 25 verses, you'll hear the story of how the angel Gabriel appeared to Zechariah and told him that even though he and his wife Elizabeth had been childless all these years, God was going to open her womb and she would give birth to a son, a son who was going to play a special role in God fulfilling the promise to send a Savior. Now, Elizabeth is Mary's aunt, and after Mary finds out that she's going to give birth to Jesus, she goes to visit her. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the child leapt in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit and exclaimed with a loud cry, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And why has this happened to me? that the mother of my Lord comes to me. For as soon as I heard your greeting, the child in my womb leapt for joy. And blessed is she who believed that there would be a fulfillment of what was spoken to her by the Lord. And right there, there's the first place in our story where we see a reference to God's faithfulness. Blessed is she who believed that there would be a fulfillment of what was spoken to her by the Lord. Elizabeth praises Mary because Elizabeth knows that Mary is trusting God. Mary knows God will fulfill God's promises. Mary knows God can be trusted. How about you? Mary knows God can be trusted because she knows the great stories of God's faithfulness. We know Mary knows these stories of Scripture because the song that she sings is filled with references and allusions to the great themes and stories of the Bible. And because Mary knows the stories of our faith, Mary knows that God can be trusted. Listen to her song. And Mary said, My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. For he has looked with favor on the lowliness of his servant. Surely, from now on, all generations will call me blessed. For the mighty one has done great things for me, and holy is his name. His mercy is for those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud and thoughts of their hearts. He has brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy, according to the promise he made to our ancestors, to Abraham and to his descendants forever. In this song, there are allusions to the songs of other women from the Old Testament, Miriam, Deborah, and Hannah, women God used to help move the story of salvation forward. 
In, in Mary's song, we hear echoes of the great themes of Scripture, God remembering the lowly, the mighty one showing the strength of his arm by lifting them up and casting down the mighty, God remembering the poor and filling the hungry with good things while sending those whose hope is in their riches, and they discover that their wealth can't save them. We could literally spend weeks unpacking the Magnificat, the Latin name for this song, taken from the line, my soul magnifies the Lord. But today I want us to focus just on the last line. God has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy, according to the promise he made to our ancestors, to Abraham and his descendants forever. With these words, Mary is helping us make the connection between the promise, the covenant that God made with Abraham in Genesis chapter 12 where God says, I will make of you a great nation and I will bless you and make your name great so that you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you and the one who curses you, I will curse. And in you, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. And you may remember that at the time God made this promise, Abraham and Sarah were an old childless couple. Their whole life they had desperately wanted children but never had any. Like so many, they knew the pain and grief of infertility. In Genesis 15, Abraham gives voice to his grief and sorrow when he says to God, Oh Lord God, what will you give me for I continue childless? The heir of my house is Eliezer of Damascus. You've given me no offspring. And so a slave born in my house is to be my heir. Can you hear the heartache and frustration in Abraham's voice? All this time, no children, pain, sorrow, grief. Look at what God says in response to Abraham's lament. But the word of the Lord came to him. This man shall not be your heir, no one, but your very own issue shall be your heir. <clears throat> God brought Abraham outside and said, Look towards the heavens and count the stars if you are able to count them. And then God said to Abraham, So shall your descendants be. And Abraham believed the Lord. And the Lord reckoned it to him as righteousness. Despite not knowing how God would fulfill his promise, Abraham knows that God can be trusted. Abraham believed God. Abraham trusted God. And, and a few chapters later in Genesis 21, we read about the birth of Isaac, the God, the child God had promised. The Lord dealt with Sarah as he said, and the Lord did for Sarah as he had promised. Sarah conceived and bore in her womb Abraham, a son in his old age, at the time of which God had spoken. Even though the promise took longer to fulfill than Abraham and Sarah wanted, even though it took longer than he and Sarah had hoped, they learned that God's timing is always right. They learned that God is always true to his word. Abraham knew that he could trust God. How about you? Mary knows the stories of God's fidelity to his promises and her song, the Magnificat, revels in God's faithfulness. Mary knows God can be trusted. Abraham knows God can be trusted. But sometimes trusting God takes a lot of courage. It takes courage for a young unmarried woman to say yes and allow herself to be overshadowed by the power of the Holy Spirit and conceive a child. And it took courage for Abraham to trust God when God commanded him to do something that sounded absolutely ludicrous, to sacrifice his son. But that's exactly what we read about in Genesis 22, a story known as the binding of Isaac. And it's the binding of Isaac that the Italian uh, Renaissance painter, uh, Jacopo Paterno, connects to Mary's visitation to Elizabeth in a fresco found in a chapel in Florence, Italy. In the painting, we see Elizabeth kneeling in front of Mary. And up close, we see a depiction of the binding of Isaac. I know it may be difficult to see on the screen, but 
in the painting, the artist has, has included three inscriptions. Two are held by angels flanking Abraham and Isaac. The inscriptions interpret the actions of both Abraham, Mary, and God. The, the inscription on the left says, uh, he, Abraham and Mary, owes him, Isaac, Jesus, to God. The one on the right, speaking of God, says, nor does he promise in vain. In our story today, Mary recalls the mercy that God has shown Abraham and his seed, Isaac. And God's mercy is nowhere more clearly revealed than in the near sacrifice of Isaac that we read about in Genesis 22. In that story, God spared Abraham's son because of Abraham's faithfulness. And in the most profound way imaginable, God's most wondrous act of grace is shown to us when God refuses to spare his own son so that we can experience God's grace and mercy that we see in the cross and the sacrificial death of the son that Mary has in her womb. A third inscription is a prayer. Most excellent God, look favorably. As we look at both the painting and the story, our prayer is that our most excellent God, the God who has proven faithful over and over again, will look favorably upon us and help us set aside our doubts and fears and live with faith and trust and confidence, just like Abraham, just like Mary. Abraham knew God could be trusted. Mary knew God could be trusted. What would it look like for you to trust God today? Maybe it's trusting that you don't have to earn God's approval and love. In Jesus, in his perfect life, his sacrificial death and powerful resurrection and ascension, God has shown us the depth and power of God's love for us already. Love that is given as an act of grace. Maybe it's trusting God with some problem you're facing, some burden that you have been carrying around for a long time. What would it look like for you to lay that burden down at Jesus' feet? What would it look like to trust that even now God's Spirit is working in God's perfect timing to bring a resolution to what is troubling you? Maybe it's trusting God with your future. Maybe it's trusting God with your past. Maybe it's entrusting your family to God's love and mercy and protection. Every one of us has some part of our life that we can entrust to God's love and mercy and grace. My Christmas wish for each and every one of you is that you will always remember that you too can trust God. Gracious God, give us faith. Faith like Abraham and Sarah. Faith like Mary. To trust you with all of our life. For we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. This next hymn is a paraphrase of Mary's Magnificat, her song of praise, sung to an old American folk melody. <laughs> My soul gives glory to my God, my heart pours out its praise. God lifted up my holiness in many marvelous ways. My God has done great things for me. Yes, holy is his name. All people will declare me blessed, and blessings they shall claim. From age to age, to all who fear such mercy, love. Far and near, dismiss. 
missing selfish hearts. Praise God whose loving covenant supports those in distress. Remembering past promises with present I don't know about you, but it does my heart so good to see all of the laughter and all of the smiles and everyone who's been a part of the events we've had during this Advent season. We are only able to hold events like this because of you. Not only because of your monetary gifts, but your physical presence, you coming and being a part of all the events makes it so special, especially after not being able to host these events last year. I'm so hoping that you will make plans today to be a part of one of our Christmas Eve services as we continue to celebrate the reason for the season, the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ. In just a minute, we will conclude our time together with our benediction song. But right now, I encourage you to watch this brief video on ways that you can give to the ministry of our church. There are many ways that you can give toward the mission of Broadmoor. You can go to broadmoormethodist.org slash giving to give safely and securely online. You can text BE MORE to 73256. And of course, you can also mail checks to our physical address at 10230 Molly Lee Drive, Baton Rouge, Louisiana 70815. My friends, may you grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior. My friends, may you grow in grace and in the knowledge of Jesus Christ. To God be the glory, now and forever, now and forever, amen. To God be the glory, now and forever, now and forever, amen.